Welcome, everybody. This presentation is uh, meant to make you faster at uh, doing things in assemblies, faster at design reuse, uh, faster from having to look up and find things that you've done before and having to redo things over and over. So uh, drag and drop modeling, we're going to talk about library features, smart components, and mate references. Uh, most of the things that are coming in this presentation are stuff out of our assembly uh, training class, and we'll have info on that at the end of the presentation. So the first thing we're going to talk about that can make you much faster is something called library features. And this is basically just the reuse of common sets or groups of features. So that, that whole pattern that you're tired of cutting over and over a thousand times a week, this uh, drafted pocket that I'm showing here on the screen that I'm tired of drawing a million times, to every, but we use it over and over in different parts. So we're going to look at how to use library features, which is really easy, drag and drop, and then more importantly, how to create library features. Most of you have probably used them, but creating them is uh, a little more obscure. Um, information is, of course, in the help files in SolidWorks, but uh, you know, it, we're going to show you how to do it here. And I've just got a part, and we're going to go to the design library. So over in the task pane, just in case you have never gone here before, uh, on the right-hand side of the screen, the little set of library books is where you get the link to the design library. And SolidWorks gives you some stuff out of the box uh, to use. The real power of this, though, is you adding your own things to this design library, things that you use all the time. Uh, they give you a few features, a few sketches. So I've got some that I've created. And we're going to go in here to the features and take a look at some of these things. And these are really easy to use. Um, it's just drag and drop, basically. You can have parts in here, you can have features in here, you can have sketches in here. So if I want to drag this little uh, pocket in, I've drawn this once, it's basically like doing a copy and paste. It's like you had the other file open and you're copying and pasting. I can drop that onto any face that I want. It depends on how this was created, how you use it. Um, this pops up and shows me that I can use an edge to locate this. So we'll go ahead and select that edge and pop that in. Now the cool thing about it is it comes in as a group of features in the tree. We see it's a little library feature. This pocket could be a bunch of things combined together. The great thing is is you still have access to all the dimensions and everything inside there and you can modify those and make changes to them. So just another example, we got this grease fitting that will drop in and when you design these, which we'll show you how to do in just a second, you can have configurations inside of here. So different catalog sizes in this example for this grease fitting. Um, and you can make this as complex or as simple as you want. The other little window that pops up is basically showing you the original part, like you've done a copy and paste from there. It asks me here in this case for a face to locate this to or from. And then in this one, I have to provide a little more information. Dimension from that top face, how far down do I want that? And then what rotation angle do I want around to locate that thing? Um, I'm also even able to change some of the values in this one. Um, that's up to the user who creates these, whether you're allowed to make changes to those or not. Um, and then you can also just have sketches. So some sketch that you're tired of drawing over and over. You can just drag and drop that in, drop that onto any face you want, uh, locate that into place, and, and start working on that sketch or use that sketch for anything. So using them is very easy. Um, making your own is what we want to show next. So I've got this pocket that I'm tired of drawing, this drafted pocket with fillets in the corners and fillets at the top. And I'm tired of drawing this over and over. We use this, you know, lots of different places, let's say. So all you basically have to do is model this thing one time. Um, I have got, the only extra thing I've gone in and done here is change the names of the dimensions. Instead of just D1, D2, D3, like our defaults, I've gone in and changed those names. And the way you do that is just by double clicking a dimension. And in the little box that pops up right here, you can put the name of what you want to call this. Um, you don't have to do this. This just makes it nicer when the person goes to use it. So instead of asking them for D1 and D2, it asks them for height and width or something that makes sense to them. So that's really the only special thing I've done to this. Um, I don't want this block to be part of the library feature, of course. I just want the pocket to be part of it. But I had to make the block to be able to make the pocket. So we'll get to choose what we actually want to be in the library feature uh, in just a second. So you just browse over to your design library. And at the top are some buttons. And the little library books with the green plus sign is called Add to Library. And that's the one we're going to use to add this set of features into the library. That pops up a property manager on the left side of the screen and wants to know which actual features you'd like to add. And here's where you most likely will use your flyout tree. I could have pre-selected as well, but I want to include the cut, the fillet, 
and all the fillets, right? I don't want the block, the boss extrude, the first feature in there to be part of the library feature. I don't want that to be dragged in when somebody uses this. Then uh, pick which folder I want to put this into. Um, what do I want to call this? And then down here at the very bottom in description, this is where you can put the instructions. So like drag and drop onto a planar face, et cetera, et cetera, right? Whatever, however you want to tell the person how to use this. Show up when they float over it. That's all you have to do. You say okay to that, and that thing is ready to be used. Gets stored in the library. Um, the file that you started with really is junk. You can throw that file away. That file then is, is saved into the library. Um, and you can you can get access to that uh, anytime you want. Drafted Pocket, you can open that file right from there. So let's just close that one. Don't even need to save it. Like I said, that's junk. You can erase that. The, the real one's been saved into the library. It is saved with a different extension. It's a SLD LFP file, library feature part. And you can see there when I float over it in the window, it tells me drag and drop onto a planar face, right? That's your instructions that you typed in. So let's try using it real quick here. So we've just got a generic block we want to drop this on drag and drop this feature in. I can drop it on any face that I want. Uh, it's just an extruded cut, right? We'll drop it onto there. It wants to know two edges in this case. So it shows me in my model this edge over here. By the way, if I would have hidden the dimensions before I saved, the little preview picture wouldn't have had the dimensions on. And then it wants to know an edge at the bottom. It's asking for those edges because I had dimensions to those edges. Um, and then the person gets access to change that left locating dimension and that vertical locating dimension. Uh, it's really meant to be turned this way, right? So I can adjust these to two inches and uh, move these things over wherever I want to move these to. Let's make this one inch. And then I do have access to size dimensions. Um, right now, the user would be able to change any of these things they wanted. So they could change the, the height of the pocket, the width of the pocket, and make adjustments to this thing. We want the height to be two inches in this case, right? Maybe we want to change some of the fillet sizes or whatever in this. If you want to lock people out of being able to change those dimensions, all you have to do is open that library feature part up. It looks a little different in the feature tree than what you're used to seeing in a regular part file. Uh, there's a references and a dimensions folder. The references folder is what they're going to have to pick when they go to, create, go to use it, those two edges, and drop it on a face. And then here's the dimensions they'll be allowed to change. If you drag those into the internal dimensions folder, they will be locked out of making changes to those. So if you never want them to be able to change the draft angle, you drop it into internal dimensions. Maybe you don't ever want them to be able to change the bottom fillet. And then any of the locating dimensions, you should drop into there as well. Those all automatically were put in for me in this case. It knew those were locating dimensions. And then you would resave this, and it would be slightly different. So that is how to use a library feature, drag and drop, really easy, and then a, a quick run through on how to create a library feature. All the details of that are in the uh, help file. Uh, just look up creating library features. All right, moving on, we're going to talk about something that will make you faster on mating, um, and this is called mate references. So basically these are predefined mates on a frequently used part. You wouldn't go to the trouble to do this on a part you're only going to use once. But parts that you use over and over, hardware, uh, handles and knobs and nuts and bolts and things like that, you would want to add this. Our toolbox library already has mate references on those. You can snap those bolts into place. So to talk about mate references, I'm also going to do a quick review of alt-drag mating, just in case you don't know about that as well. Really kind of the same thing that mate references are doing in the background. Let's take a look at this little assembly. And... Hopefully you know that uh, when you want to do some mates, uh, you can just alt-drag to mate things into place. If you alt-drag a flat face to a flat face, you get coincident. If you alt-drag a round cylinder face to a cylinder hole, you get concentric. Uh, if you alt-drag a circular edge, which is what I'm going to grab here, to another circular edge, you'll get two mates. You get this pin in the hole mate, basically. Um, and this thing is just free to spin. If I go look in the mates in the tree, that added a concentric and a coincident. So that's just alt-drag mating, or I, it's actually called the uh, smart mates. Same thing with this one. Now, this one is unique. This one, I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to alt-drag this outside circular edge to this other outside circular edge. Um, the tab key, while you're, while you're dragging, you can flip that part forward or backwards to do anti-aligned or aligned. But if you look at this one, in the tree, as soon as I let go, this one adds three mates. It added the coincident to the two flats. It added the concentric to the big outside to the other circle edge that I dropped onto. But because this one had a matching circular pattern of holes, it also added a third mate. So that's a special situation. 
Now, wouldn't it be great if we could do that same thing without having to have the part on the screen, without having to physically grab something and alt drag to the other thing? I mean, that's really fast and easy, but parts you use over and over, it would be nice to have that all predefined in the part. So I've got another shaft that I want to put in uh, the front here. Let's open that file up. And I know that 99% of the time, I want to mate that thing using this circular edge right here because that's going to give me two mates, the best thing that I can get. So I'm going to create a mate reference. This is found on the Features toolbar, same place you make planes and axes under Reference Geometry, Mate Reference. Or, of course, you can always go up to the search box and search for the command Mate Reference and find that command that way. Um, I'm going to say I want to use that edge to do a mate and just leave everything else the way it is, all at default, and say OK. Now if you look in the tree for this part, a mate reference has been stored in this file, a predefined mate. And if I just come over then and drag and drop this file in, I can drag and drop from Windows Explorer, I can drag and drop from my uh, library, I can drag and drop from my recent files, all that works. And as soon as I get my mouse over any circular edge, it's going to snap in place, just like doing an alt drag mate was doing on those other parts. But I didn't have to identify what I was grabbing and, and, and hold the alt key down or any of that. So for parts that you know, you're going to use over and over a lot, this is a really great thing to do, a predefined mate called a mate reference. If you don't want to use it, fine. You just drop the part in space and mate it any way you want. Right? So we'll drop that in. This one happens to have configurations. We'll choose one. And two mates got added for that guy, and he is free to spin. So all drag mating and mate references are, are great ways to uh, be faster at mating versus the traditional mating methods. All right, and the last thing we're going to take a look at here is smart components. So these are special parts that you drag and drop into an assembly, but these parts can bring in other parts with them and other features with them. So we'll show you how smart components work in a couple cool examples, and then we'll show you how to actually create these. Once again, very, very easy to create these. You basically model it one time and save it that way. Take a look at this. So I've got an assembly here, a little machine uh, with some uh, sprockets and gears and belts going on inside this. Not that that's important, but uh, that's the assembly we're going to use to show some of this stuff. Let's hide this frame real quick. And uh, right now, if I turn this little shaft here inside this bracket, the big sprocket turns, there's a belt connecting those and so on. I want to isolate in on some parts, so we'll window around this, right click and isolate in on those, just to get the other stuff out of the way for now. All right, up top, let's do a section view. I've already got a bearing inside here at the top of this little shaft. And if you take a look, the, the well, and a snap ring groove also, or a snap ring. So the snap ring, right, has to have a groove, and you can see there's a groove been cut in there for that. Um, let's hide that temporarily just to get it out of our way. And then there's also a bearing. And if I hide that bearing, right, we really need the shaft to have a step in it. We really need a little oil groove in, in the shaft. We need a bearing race cut out inside this part. So a bunch of features have to be added if I'm going to just add a bearing to this, the other end of the shaft or anywhere on the shaft. And I'm tired of doing that over and over and over again. So I've set it up to where my bearings um, have these features preloaded in with them. All right, let's see how this how this works. Um, let's just change the, the height of this bracket real quick here from 200 to 180 so that our shaft does stick down into the bottom of this thing the way we want it. Perfect. And uh, let's make this bearing in. Uh, let me zoom out and show you. So this bearing that we're going to find here, once I find it, So this bearing is a smart component. It's already been set up as a smart component, and we'll show you, how, like I said, how to make those um, in a minute. I just want to show you how to use them. So this bearing here, I'm going to drag and drop this in. One of the things that these smart components can do is auto size. So if you've ever used our toolbox, how it can auto size, if I drop this bearing in various places, it's just basically picking a configuration that closely closest matches uh, the thing I'm dropping it to. Right, so that's one of the things that can be set up with a little table inside these smart components. Pretty cool. I'm going to drop this on the shaft. There's also a mate reference in here, so it's snapping into place. And I actually uh, will accept that mate. I actually want a smaller bearing, though. 
Um, I don't want to use that size. I want there to be a, an interference on purpose, right? Because we need, need to cut a little step in there. So I'm going to switch to this 17 millimeter bearing that's smaller than the shaft size. We're also going to drag this down and we're going to just mate that in place. I can use the alt drag mating, right? Just alt drag this face of the bearing uh, to the bottom of the shaft and get that in place. All right, I don't want to cut that bearing race. I don't want to cut that oil groove. I don't want to cut that step. All right, let's go back into a section view just so we can see this happen. All I got to do is right click on that bearing and say uh, insert smart features. Now, how do you know whether one of these parts has that capability or not? Well, you could right click and see. Uh, but if I look over in the tree, and hopefully this zooming tool works just fine in the webcast, I'm sure it does. If you look over in the tree, the part file has a different little symbol next to it. It's a part file with a lightning bolt. That's the indicator that this is a smart component. What you can do is right click on that part and say go ahead and insert the things you want to insert. And this particular bearing wants to bring in a, ho a housing bore fillet, a housing bore, a shaft undercut fillet, a shaft undercut, and a shaft cut. So five features this thing wants to drop in. All I got to do is tell it which part to, to cut this stuff into and select that on the screen, and then which part, looking at the little preview window to cut this stuff into, that would be the shaft in our case, and say, okay, by the way, I can turn off any of those features in a, in a certain case if I don't want to add everything. And when I say okay, it's going to cut and add all of those features into there for me. All of that stuff's been added. If I hide this, this pairing, you can see all that happened. So that's saved in that part file. Uh, snap ring groove, same thing. We'll drag and drop him in. It's auto sizing depending on where I drop it to different sizes. We're going to drop it inside this bore. It is a smart component as well. We're going to do one quick mate here, this guy to this bottom face. And then I'd like it to cut its own snap ring groove. So I'm going to right click on that. I'm going to say go ahead and insert your smart features. It wants to bring in a snap ring groove. I just got to tell it what part to put it on. This part right here. Say OK. Cuts that groove in. So lots of cool things can happen with that. Um, a motor that you drag and drop in and it brings in own, its own mounting plate in and its own hardware, right? A, a sprocket that you drag in and it brings in a whole kit of other parts. So anything that most cases belong together, you could package those together in a smart component. So how do you make these? Very, very easy to do. Let's uh, get out of here to this file. So I've got a, a little block box, a little wooden box, and I've got this in the front, a latch, some screws, a latch plate, or a key strike plate, and a key. And then inside there, there's all the pockets uh, that go with that. So I want to take and make this lock the smart component. So you can pre-select it or you can pick it after. And the command we're looking for is make smart component. It's on the tools pull down menu. Tools make smart component way down at the bottom of the screen. Or of course you could always search for that in the search box, command search. So that's the part I want to make smart, the lock. That's the part I'll that's the file I'll drag and drop in when I want to use this in the future. Are there any other components you'd like to bring in with it? Yes, I'd like to bring in that screw and that screw, this plate and that key. Are there any features you'd like to bring in with it? And as soon as I click in that features box, it hides the parts, which is really nice, and lets me pick the underlying pocket and extruded cut and other extruded cut underneath there. If you want to see the parts back, you can. Um, here is where you can do the auto sizing. In this case, we're not going to be doing that, but that can be set up as well. And we're going to say OK. That is all you have to do. Basically model up an assembly one time. Now that lock part is a smart component. It has a little lightning bolt over it in the tree. And it doesn't matter whether it's in this assembly or another assembly, right? I drag and drop that part in, uh, mate him into place. Oops, I missed. Let's try that again. Drag and drop that guy in. Uh, except that coincident mate. Let's do one more mate here. Let's make this and this parallel to each other just so things come out right. And I actually want parallel the other way, right? And then you could probably put, you would really probably want to put a distance mate in there, but we'll just leave that free to move around. I then go to that part, either in the tree or on the graphics screen, say insert your smart features. And it says, okay, here's the things I'd like to bring in, these features and these components. You can turn any of them off that you want. You just need to pick the top face, and you just need to pick the front face. It shows me in the little preview box. 
I select those and those components come in, cuts all the features in there, and there's that. If I move this around, right, I left it underdefined, you can see the features came in with it. If I move this around, you can see some of the components moving. We'll move it to somewhere that makes sense. We'll hit rebuild. All the features move with it. Those are in-context features that have been made down inside this part. This plate here now has these cutouts and everything in it. So that all propagates down. All came from the part file. Just dragging and dropping in a part file and having the ability to bring in other parts and other features with it. That is called a smart component. Like I said, all of the information that was in this webcast today is covered in our assembly modeling training class uh, offered locally by us, CATI. Um, you can go to the CATI website and under training, look up the details of that class and see when that class is offered. That is a two-day class. Teaches you, of course, many more things, top-down design, in-context design, more ways of mating, and these fast shortcuts for, for mating uh, things into place, uh, for working with the design library and smart components. All right, so let's see if we have any questions here. I see somebody did ask, um, they didn't see a folder called demo feature in their library. Um, and that is correct, you will not. Um, <laughs> the only one you will see, uh, hopefully, you will see the one called design library. Um, the great thing is you can add your all these other folders in here I've added, right? So the the third the other button up there, uh, the library books with the star next to it is add file location, but you just browse and you can have multiple libraries. These can just be regular folders, basically. They're just a folder that you're saying add in here and it treats it as a library folder. So yeah, the demo features one is just one that that I've added. Um, you should have the one called design library. That's the one that gets installed with SolidWorks. Underneath there are parts, features, assemblies, some example things to get you started. What if you don't have the default folder? Yes, that happens all the time on our training machines as well. So if you, do, if you go to the little library books here and you do not have a folder called Design Library, um, it is because your folder, your paths are pointing at the wrong place. Now, it depends on uh, if you're in a company, a multi-user environment in your company and everybody's supposed to be sharing one library. Um, or if you have your own library that got installed with SOLIDWORKS, I don't know those details, but you basically need to go in your options here and under file locations, pull this drop down, and there is a setting for where the design library or where SOLIDWORKS thinks your design library is. The default location is C program data, SOLIDWORKS, SOLIDWORKS whatever version, 2017, 18, whatever, and then design library. So it may have just lost that path in your exam in your case, or your company may store the library somewhere else. Um, that's what I don't know. But you have to have something in there, some path in there. I've got several. That's why I had those folders. And then you you'll have that link. This is where the default one is supposed to be that gets installed with SolidWorks. Um, how long have Smart Components been around? At least ten versions, ten releases, ten years, I think, at least. Yeah, they're one of those features that uh, they've been around for a long time, but they're easily forgotten, unfortunately. Just pass over them sometimes. Yep, yep. Somewhere there must have been a question. I see Chris answered it here through text about uh, can you create notes, annotations, and reuse those in a drawing. Um, yeah, so the very first thing I showed, the library feature, is just how I was dropping pockets in and dropping sketches in. If you're in a drawing, you can have predefined notes all saved in the library and drag and drop those in for weld symbols or for any kind of notes you want on a drawing. Absolutely. The sub part that gets cut, can it be saved as configurations? So I think what you're asking is this part here where the cuts got added to, obviously we used the same end in both ends of this box and the cuts got added to the other one too. But could that part be saved with a configuration? And I'm guessing you're asking that because you'd want a version with that thing and a version without that thing. Well, yeah, that, that feature that got cut in there is a real feature in the tree, and you could very easily make a configuration of this part that turns that on or turns that off. Absolutely. Um, in the assembly, the parts would still be there. You'd have to make an assembly level configuration that turned the parts off as well, but definitely that could be done. Um, let's see, in library features, if you wanted your pocket to always be some dimension from the opposite face, can you do that? If you wanted your pocket to always be a distance from the opposite. So yeah, can you include, I guess you're asking here, can you include dimensions in there? Um, let me open that other file up here. 
So when I made uh, this library feature file here, I did include a left locating dimension and a vertical locating dimension. And because I put those in there, that's what required me to then pick an edge when I dropped it in. And yeah, you could have this number in there as whatever dimension you wanted, and you could even have that dimension locked down to where somebody couldn't change that. So yes, that could be done. Um, you said in a library feature, and that's that's what this was. Now, if you're asking in the smart component, where I dragged and dropped that in, uh, like the lock example, if you could always have that at some distance, uh, you could, I guess, have a mate reference or something to do that. I had the mate reference to snap it to this top face. You could have a mate reference that would snap it to the front face. Otherwise, you have to add an extra mate like I did. Um, also, then they wanted to know, could that face be flat or curved? Um, in the example of the library feature, as long as you can dimension to it in the original model, sure. Um, and in the example here of the smart component, as long as you can mate to it, sure. Well, everyone, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, really appreciate the turnout. And uh, there are more webcasts. We have an entire month of these webcasts ranging on every topic you can imagine of. <clears throat> Excuse me. So please check the CATI website. Find one you like and uh, hope to see you again on one of these. And, you know, if you're in our, our local regions, we hope to see you at one of our live events coming up as well. So thank you very much.